Like Kelsey mentioned, my name is Michelle, and I'm a developer at Deus. At Deus, we built open source tools to make Kubernetes easy to use for developers and DevOps. We started building this tool called Helm, a package manager for Kubernetes, to make it simple and easy to install and manage applications. Helm is a Kubernetes community project, so I've had the pleasure of working on this project for the last year and a half with the good folks from Bitnami, Google, Intel, and several others. Helm grew from a small idea from an internal hackathon into a well-known and widely used tool solely because people from all over, individual contributors, people from different companies, were willing to come and collaborate on a problem we were all having. But we weren't the only ones building neat tools for Kubernetes. And we were constantly fascinated by the, way, the creative ways in which people were using Kubernetes features for their own apps. We found ourselves wanting a place to talk about these efforts and see these examples. So this time last year, we started a special interest group called SIG Apps, which focused on just that. And I've also had a really good time co-leading that effort with Matt Farina from HPE. But let's step back. I, like many of you, got my first taste of the power of Kubernetes from Kelsey Hightower's live demo of rolling updates. And things just seemed to click in my head, just like his Tetris pieces on the screen. For many ops folks, Kubernetes is like the light at the end of the tunnel, a new hope, a tool for empowerment. And it was about time. I see the evolution of ops like the evolution of the vacuum cleaner. We started with a very manual and laborious process for hosting applications on actual physical machines. This was the era of the broom. It was common to SSH into your machines to install application dependencies by hand or by bash scripts with nuances still falling through the cracks. Then we moved to more mature configuration management using tools like Chef and Puppet for managing now virtual machines, making it easier to scale and configure machines for hosting applications, making that whole process a lot less manual. You still have to define uh, this. So this is the uh, era of the more popular vacuum clean it, cleaner as we know it today. You still have to define the steps to your end state. And direction is still needed, but it is much easier than any phase before. And it definitely gets the job done well. What's so exciting now, though, is at, we're at this whole other level where you don't even have to worry about which application goes on which machine. We are now instead talking about scheduling resources. And scaling applications can be as easy as modifying the replica count in one command. And desired state is something you declare instead of an abstraction in your mind that you're trying to get to while you're banging away at keys desperately at 2 a.m. We are now in the era of the Roomba, where all you have to do is click a button and it knows what needs to be done. So you can sit back on your couch and eat all the chips your heart desires and not even worry about the crumbs that may fall to the ground because you know it'll be handled. So to the ops folks, congratulations. It is incredible to see your journey and I am a developer who is enthralled by your work and your progress. Kubernetes has made the ops experience much easier and the thing is, as developers, at lots of times, we take the tools that we have and their ease of use for granted. So let's switch over and talk about developer experiences some. 
It is so empowering for a developer to be able to think of an idea and have it exist in the matter of hours or days or months. No matter who you are today, it is possible for you to build things. This is Misaku Wakamiya. She's a retired Japanese banker who taught herself how to use the computer at the age of 60. And at the prime age of 81 years old, she released her first iPhone app, which aimed to help and encourage elderly people like herself enjoy the digital age. How many times have you heard of iPhone app success stories? I know I've heard of several stories just like this of someone bringing an app idea to life by learning a little programming and how to use Xcode. There are millions of apps in the App Store, and almost all of them were developed using Xcode, which is at the center of the Apple development experience. You can use this one tool to build and test your app across devices. It guides you from the moment you click the button to scaffold a new app to the time you release your app to the App Store. And you definitely don't need to know how to build an iPhone in order to build an iPhone app. Another great developer experience is what Ruby on Rails provides. In fact, many moons ago, this is how I got started as a developer. So this is my favorite developer experience to talk about. Ruby on Rails is a popular MVC web framework. Their tagline, which is what lured me in, was that anyone could build a blog in 15 minutes. This was great marketing, and it was true. You could, in fact, build a blog from scratch in actually under 15 minutes with no prior web development experience. Rails made web development so incredibly easy, it felt like magic. I was shipping features in no time and really had no idea and didn't need to know what was going on under the hood. I never even thought about the tool. I was just thinking about the features that my product managers wanted. So several months in, I did end up learning about the internals of Rails. But that was when I really needed to and when I was genuinely interested. Rails defined the Ruby ecosystem. It built on other underlying tools to make this powerful yet simple web development experience. It also bootstrapped many of the successful startups and services that we're familiar with today. And actually, hundreds of thousands of applications were built with this framework since its release in 2004. And at a point in time, this was the hot go-to web prototyping framework for startups. What also popped up around this time was the idea of the 12-factor app. 12-factor was a set of rules for organizing your web app for maximum portability and minimal divergence between environments. These best practices were already baked in the Rails framework and went hand in hand with the Rails philosophy. So not only was Rails empowering us to be productive developers, but we were also confident that we were following best practices based on years of experience deploying web applications. So this brings me to a question. What is today's Kubernetes and cloud-native developer experience like? Well, it's like going back to the broom. You have to know about a whole host of things before you can even begin to be productive deploying apps on Kubernetes. You have to learn resource types and what each resource type does and how they work together. You have to learn how to define resources, which means you'll likely end up lots of, writing lots of boilerplate YAML over and over again. You'll need a Kubernetes cluster to test your app on, so you'll have to learn Minikube or Nanokube or Kubesolo. You'll need to learn kubectl, and then you'll need to learn how to pronounce kubectl. It could be kubectl, kubectl, Kube cuddle, Kubi cuddle, that last one's my favorite. 
Um, you got to learn about containers, and you'll have to figure out where you're going to store your images. You may get confused on when to use config maps and stateful sets and how to use init containers. And there's a whole host of things that I haven't even mentioned, but you can probably think of that you need to know in order to deploy your apps on Kubernetes. And while learning all of that is actually worth it in order to deploy your apps on Kubernetes in the end, the process of getting there is still tedious and manual and can be draining. So the struggle is real. And while things have gotten much easier for the operator in this new cloud-native ecosystem, the developer experience has gotten much more difficult. But it doesn't have to be that way. So let's reimagine this world. There are three things, at least, that developers need to be successful uh, with deploying cloud-native applications in this cloud-native ecosystem. Lots of cloud native. One, we need a 12 factor for Kubernetes. As operators, we want lots of capabilities for the ability to run anything, and we never want to be in a situation where we don't have the ability to support a particular type of workload. As operators, we want guidance on the best practices for how we ought to be structuring our cloud-native apps. So what we need is a framework or a manifesto for uh, thinking about cloud-native applications. Two, we need an Xcode for Kubernetes. We need some powerful tooling which streamlines building distributed apps. To debug an issue, I don't want to have to spin up another tool. And to package my app, I just want to click a button or run a command. As a developer, I'd like some encapsulation of a whole bunch of other tools working together under the hood to give me a straightforward developer experience. And after I've gotten something out the door, I want to be able to keep building on what I have with a single integrated tool chain. Three, we need a real Rails for Kubernetes. Distributed apps should be fun and easy to build, test, and deploy. If I think it, I should be able to build it quickly without feeling burned out. Rails became famous on this promise of being able to build a blog in 15 minutes. We should have something similar, a way to easily get cloud-native applications out the door quickly. And I'm hopeful, because the building blocks are available. And look at where we've gotten in the last three years. So let's challenge the status quo. Kubernetes and this new cloud-native ecosystem feels like the way it should have always been. It's the light at the end of the tunnel. It should be normal now for developers to build these massive scalable applications powered by cloud-native technologies. So now is the time to bring up the developer experience as well and empower our developers with their own Roombas in this space. So you might be wondering, how do I get involved? <laughs> um, please join me in SIG Apps to discuss these topics and more. And thank you so much for your time today.